friends, my name is Courtney and I work here at the Urbana Regional Library as a Children's Library Associate. And today I'm going to show you a fun project to do uh, that is a STEM project that you can do during uh, Earth Day week. Uh, it's a little bit lengthy, so don't feel like it's too much for you. Uh, once you get it going, it's super simple to do, um, and it's a fun project to watch grow over time. Our project today is actually going to be a sprout house. Um, and what you do is you grow live active seed that you can eat on regular household kitchen sponges. Now, as I said, this process is a little lengthy and you need a handful of supplies to do it, but it's super easy and super fun, so please don't get intimidated. All right, so let's dive in. To begin, let's lay out our supply. First, you're gonna need a base to grow your sponge house on, um, and you want it to be leak proof and stand up to water, okay? So you can use a general dinner plate if you want to. Um, you can use potting supplies if you like as well, again, without the hole so that way nothing gets drenched. Um, but I actually went ahead and I found a reusable um, and disposable um, tin that you can use for um, cooking or for your grill plates and things like that. So I went ahead and got one from home. You'll also wanna use a squirt bottle because throughout the week you have to continue uh, wetting your sponges to make sure that your seeds grow. You're gonna need a couple cups and some water. You're also gonna need to choose some seed that you wanna grow. Now I went ahead and went to our local organic and raw market here in the Frederick area and I got a handful of seed. I have some brown flax, some golden flax, sesame seed, and chia seed. And when you buy these, you wanna make sure with your grocer or whomever is in that department to check and see if anything needs to be refrigerated or kept out of sunlight until you're ready to use this project. You don't want your uh, seeds to die before you start. All right, and then you're gonna need a spoon to mix your seed in your water and also to get it onto your sponges. I have some toothpicks here to use to keep the sponges together, but I also have a hot glue gun. Um, a handful of the steps, I found it to be easier to use a hot glue gun than I did the toothpicks. Um, so if you're a younger friend and you're not allowed to handle the hot fun stuff yet, make sure you grab an adult so you can complete that step. You'll also want to take a pair of scissors so that way you can cut your sponges to whatever size that you want to when you're building your house. And finally, here are just some decorative items. These are totally optional. It was in the bottom of my craft drawer. I thought I'd just use them for this as a fun way to get rid of them. I found some river rocks that I've collected over time that I use for buildings and models. Um, I have some fake moss just for a little bit of texture. Um, and then I have some fake silk flowers that I found as well. And I just went ahead and took them off of their green stems so I can just use the flower heads. Again, you can get creative. You don't have to do this at all. Just a suggestion. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, our next step, step number two, is to start building the walls of our house. So my house is actually gonna have two floors. Again, I'm making an exaggeration. You do not have to make it this complicated, uh, just to give you an idea. So I'm actually going to, in order to show you guys both methods, use the toothpicks as well as the hot glue gun. So you wanna start with your two pieces, whatever length you wanna start with. And to connect them using the toothpick, you wanna to take the toothpick and just insert it very carefully into one of your kitchen sponges about halfway, okay? And then you wanna take your other kitchen sponge and you wanna slightly squeeze on where you first inserted it, just to make sure it doesn't push down all the way, okay? Until it's nice and tight, okay? Now what I'm gonna do, since I'm connecting it to these bottom sponges. I'm gonna hot glue the bottom right here just to make sure that it stays still. And again, if you don't wanna use toothpicks, you can totally use a hot glue gun. If you don't wanna use a hot glue gun, you can totally use toothpicks, whatever you wanna do. But I'm just gonna take a little bit of the hot glue just to make sure my structure is nice and sound, especially since I'm making a mega mansion. And you want to carefully put it in place, boop, right there. And you just want to apply a little bit of pressure as it's drying just to make sure it doesn't move on you. Uh, keep the structural integrity of your project. There we go. All right, I think we're good. Okay, so let's start building 
our walls. friends now we did a little bit of a time skip here following the instructions I gave you for the first level of the house I went ahead and constructed a second level and a roof again the size that I have my house you do not have to go this big um, I chose to do it just as an example for you guys just to give you an idea um, but you definitely can do whatever you'd like in your design I also went ahead as you can see at the border I took the little remnants of the silk flowers um, and just sort of kind of decorated it a little bit just to give it some pizzazz. Again, this is an additional step. You do not have to do this. So before we begin to spread our seed, we have to moisten the sponges just a little bit for the first time, just so that way the seeds can stick. So you'll want to take out the handy dandy water bottle I told you that we needed for our project and fill it up with water. Now I went ahead and pre-soaked my sponge just a little bit so you didn't have to watch me soak the entire house. But you just want to go and just gently squirt and you don't have to soak the sponge you just want a little damp just to give it some moisture so go ahead take your time do that and our next step will be to spread the seed all right now that we have our base sponges wet we can now start applying the seed now i went ahead and just lathered mine on and i saved the last seed i was going to put on um, to show you guys <music> It is week 
three, and it looks like my experiment slightly worked. Um, now, I did lay all my seeds really thick, and I kept my sprout house here at the Urbana Library branch so it could get more sun from the huge windows. But it looks like we did get some sprouts popping up back there. So the sesame and flax did sprout, and it looks like in some of these areas the chia attempted to sprout. It could be because it dried out just a little too much and I wasn't here to really baby it and give it enough water. But I will turn over one of these pieces and you can see we have a nice root system going on and ooh, even some mold. Lovely. So try the experiment out for yourself. Uh, see what you can get out of it um, and make sure that you post your videos in your um, pictures of your final product as it's growing and remember to tag us at hashtag fcpl so we can see all your beautiful creations and see how your experiment works out maybe you'll have better luck than i did and hopefully we'll see some great greenery growing on your sprout houses so thank you for joining us and we hope that you tune in later for other awesome programs